Mental Misplay is proud to be QuiverTime Ambassadors. Use the affiliate link down below and the code BIGDRAWS at checkout to help out the channel and get a sweet discount on one of the best MTG accessories on the market. This video wouldn't be possible without Moxfield.com. They are the best deck building website on the entire internet. Go make an account, it's free. Give us a follow and we'll see you out there. I can't wait to see your list. Hey guys, I didn't get a chance to get a good CEDH game in, so there's no gameplay. Instead, you've got a one take deck tech of Dawson, Pliable Pacifist. You've seen me championing this deck uh, over and over again in both casual and competitive play. The story behind it is I got the chance to do our weekly I have a number of guests that come on on a regular basis, uh, Number Knower, Sleepy Thanos, and Phil Q. Phil Q just top aided the Secret Layer match at Philly and got one of those awesome Ragavans. So they, some awesome players, some friends, some Ramp Gang dudes, and they come on every other week and we try to do themed streams. And we did a Street Fighter team when the Street Fighter commanders were spoiled. And I chose to do Dalsum, and immediately I noticed that this thing's got, you know, you've got the arms, but it's got legs for sure. So Dalsum, let's go over it. A 1-3 for 4. It's Selesnia. 2 and a green-white. It's got Reach. And it's got these, um, the flavor keywords. So it's got Dalsum, Pliable Pacifist, has Hexproof unless he's attacking. So right away, he's got Evasion. It's hard to get rid of. He's sticky. Whenever another creature you control with Reach attacks, untap it, and it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power this turn so it gives creatures with reach like fake pseudo vigilance and also gives them skulk functional skulk two keywords that they decided to not put on there for some reason and then the most important is this fierce punch ability whenever one or more creatures i control deal combat damage to a player draw a card so it's got timna stapled on there as well so if i attack one player with three creatures, I draw one card, but if I attack each player with one creature, so that's three, I'll draw three cards, which is incredibly, it's incredibly powerful. Card draw is everything. So I built this deck and I loved it and I saw that it had legs as a CEDH deck. So we're going to go through some of the stuff in here that makes it a CEDH deck. And then I'll talk about what I like to do when I end up playing at a casual table. I've got this big pile of cards here set aside. Here, let me, they're off to the side here. I've got this big stack of cards here that I can basically sub out fun stuff into the deck and make it into something that's a little more high power casual friendly. So first things first is ramp and it's mostly gonna be creature based. It's a mix though. Um, so we got Finhorn, Mystic, Lanoir, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Titania, and Birds of Paradise. So the reason these are all so important is because they double as attackers. So if you play them early and then get that early Dalsum, this is going to be one of those things that's going to enable card draw. So all these elves are pretty clutch here. Birds, not so much. And then we've got a bunch of artifact ramp as well. Crypt, Signet, Diamond, Mana Vault, Chromox, Talisman, Lotus Petal, Jeweled Lotus, and a Soul Ring. So that's going to be your artifact ramp. Some people you so we're going to talk a lot also about Ken Bauman's list. His list relies more heavily on stopping ETBs and not running any ETB effects in order to make it a little more streamlined. This and he also runs Collector Roof. I don't run Collector Roof because it originally revolved around a Heliod Ballista combo, but I've taken those out. I could do to run oof and maybe cut one or two of these, but I think they're doing pretty decent for now. So that's a ramp package. I also threw in a smothering tithe. This is a tough one in a CEDH game. I would put in something else, but I needed to fill a spot and I threw this in there. It'll eat up a lot of mana in a turn. I don't know if it pays off, but it's a good one for sure. So we're going to go into evasive creatures now. We're going to talk about some of the things that you're going to want to put down before you put Dalsum out there. That way, when Dalsum comes out, you've got a an attacker without summoning sickness to come in there and draw you some cards. So we've got... My favorite is Deadly Recluse. This thing is basically what Loyal Apprentice is to Timna, Deadly Recluse is to Dalsum. This is a 1-2 Reach Death Touch Spider. So it's untapping when it attacks, so it's always leaving you a blocker, and people aren't going to block it because it's got Death Touch. 
And people are maybe going to be a little more hesitant to attack you with things like Krom or Ishai. Flyers are not going to be coming through at you so much. And even your Timna attackers aren't going to want to swing at you so much because Deadly Recluse is just so... It's it's a big, not quite rattlesnake energy, but it's definitely a deterrent. And I like it because it's a goofy spider. People don't see it in a CEDH game, so you're always going to get a good reaction. The other ones are easy. Sarah Ascendant, Hope of Girapur, Stone Coil Serpent, and we're trying out Sky Hunter Strike Force. This thing's crazy because it's giving all of your other creatures melee as long as you control your commander. So it's adding three. It kind of undermines Dalsum's like Skulk ability. It's in the flex slot right now. Stone Coil Serpent blocking Ishai, blocking Tavit. You play it for one and it's poking all the time and providing an excellent blocker because it untaps when it attacks. Hope of Gearpore, you can play it early and it's just evasive. And we all know Sarah Ascendant's an absolute bomb. We're going to go into card draw now. We've got Toski and Oran Frostfang, which are going to double down on Dalsum's abilities. You know, you'll see yourself drawing four, five, six, seven cards a turn once these guys are out there because you're going to be punching so hard. Esper Sentinel, we all know and love. Easy, and it can double as an attacker. I really like Oran, uh, sorry, Okame Adversary. This card is going to be drawing two cards when Dalsum's out there. It's got Death Touch. It's a cool card. It costs less if people are playing green. It's a pretty good one. And then Keen Sense, you can throw on anything and just double up on the card draw. And then we've got Archivist of Agma out there as well. Agma's great because you can flash it in as a gotcha moment. People aren't going to be really playing around it quite as much, though they will somewhat in a CEDH game. So that's our like main card draw, but because Dalsum has got card draw stapled right onto him, those are just like added bonuses, right? Then we go into our stacks package. You can kind of give and take with these as you see fit. They are very strong though. So Solus Jailer is a new one. I have not had the chance to use it, but people really like it. My only complaint is as a 0-4, it's not going to be drawing cards off of Dalsum. Still strong though. Suppression Field is an absolute must. Now, it is not one-sided. It will be hitting you. I was told by Rebel to run this in this deck for the Tier 1 tournament, and I chose to run Force of Vigor instead. And every single game, I wished I had a Suppression Field. It makes Fetches cost two more mana. It makes Planeswalkers cost two more mana. So if somebody's running Minsk and Boo, their day is just ruined, or at least made a lot harder. It's going to make survival cost more there's just so many and the most important thing thrasios is going to cost two more mana which is backbreaking even mind sensor is an easy one then we've got our stuff that's going to be stopping etb effects hush hushbringer and hushbring griff uh leon and arbiter goes in the same place as even mind sensor linval is going to shut stuff down pretty hard and then we've got draneth magistrate and a deafening silence as well now deafening silence you'll notice is the only one of these rule of law type effects i'm running in here strict rule of law or archon is very very difficult and i oftentimes find it shuts off my own ability to play multiple creatures deafening silence is great because you can play more than one creature it's still a risky play it's nice early you gotta know when to play it it's a very very difficult time the Hushbringer, Hushwing Griff are awesome. Also consider Strict Proctor to shut off ETBs. Now you'll see as I go through the rest of them that I'm running things like Endurance and Solitude as well as Crater Hoof. So you have to be very, very careful about these shutting off some serious pieces. Now, like I said about Ken's deck, it goes much harder into these shutting off ETB effects and therefore he doesn't run your Endurance, Solitude, and Crater Hoof and it creates a more streamlined game. Mine is a little bit wonkier, but it's still a ton of fun. So we've gone through our stacks packages. Now we're going to go into go into our protection package, which is also a lot of fun. We've got Heroic Intervention, which is great. It's going to stop any wide board wipes. It's not going to stop your CEDH-centric board wipes. Things like this deck's biggest, biggest weakness is going to be a Cyclonic Rift or even worse, a Toxic Deluge. Both of those are awful. Heroic Intervention is good for spot protection or full board wipe protection. We've got Lauren of the Third Path, which is a big gotcha card. It's going to have, this isn't protection so much as like a little bit of cheeky card draw and maybe some Thoracal deterrent. I've seen a lot of people making jokes about like, you're not going to get those gotcha Thoracal moments, but having people play around it is strong. We've got Ranger Captain, which is going to be your whole turn wide silence, silence to go in there as well. And somewhere in here, I'm looking for it, we've also got, here, here she is, we've got Mirel, 
Shield of Archive. So these are going to be like your big silence effects. We've got the removal in here. Endurance is your big gotcha card. Solitude's going to be solid removal. And then we've got a Swords and Path. We're running both of them as well because White really needs all the answers it can get. I've got both Autumn's Veil and Veil of Summer in here because those are going to be excellent protection as well. You're going to want to land these haymakers that we'll get to at the end here. You're going to want to really protect those haymakers as much as you possibly can. We've got Destiny Spinner as well that's going to protect those haymakers. Mother of Runes going to protect your creatures on board. Shalai also going to protect your creatures on board. Then we've got Winds of Abandon as a big old removal spell, either spot removal or board wide. And in CEDH, this thing's even better because it's going to absolutely hose your opponents on those four color piles because they will not be playing a lot of basics. Then we've got Archon of Valor's Reach as your big final protection. Once you've got that nice wide board, you can put a blanket protection over it with Archon naming instance, and that's really going to shut things down hard. And then my favorite, you don't see this in a lot of CEDH games, is a Teferi's Protection. If somebody goes for the win and you drop that Teferi's Protection, as long as it's not a Thoracle win and, it's, and it hits, you're sitting pretty. You're not getting swung at by infinite creatures or something like that. You go back to your turn, you swing right back. So it's a big gotcha moment. It's for me, it's like big memes. So this list has a lot of memes in it. A lot of things you aren't going to see in a typical CEDH deck. And that's part of why I love running it so much. Sun Titan and Noxious Revival are going to be your like solid recursion. This is also like a big meme bomb, right? So it's going to do some recursion. People freak out about it. It's a nice blocker. Then we go into Tutors. I've got Survival, Eladomri's Call, Enlightened Tutor, Finale, Crop Rotations, basically another Cradle, Worldly Tutor, and a Search for Glory. So these are going to get your big haymakers that we're going to get to. They're also going to get uh, specific pieces. Survival is great because you can get your Endurance or your Solitude for some instant speed interaction without anything on the field except for a couple open mana. Enlightened Tutor gets Dalsum out early with an early mana crypt, but there's a million other things it can do. This will get out your big haymakers as well as Search for Glory. Next... We're going, and I love, love, love that Eladomri's call is instant speed and puts a creature into hand. Now we've got those bombs we were talking about. So we've got Odric Lunark Marshall, which layers really interestingly with Dalsum. Dalsum has hexproof and reach, and then loses hexproof when he's attacking. But in the combat step, you go to combat, and at the beginning of combat, Odric gives everybody hexproof and reach. And then you attack, and Dalsum's still got the Audric Hexproof on it. So, And it also lets everything on tap. It lets everything... once If Dalsum and Audric are out there, it gives everything that pseudo-vigilance and that pseudo-skulk. We've got Elder Gargaroth, which is just an absolutely hysterical bomb. If you play this in a CEDH deck, you're always going to get a wild reaction. And it's got a ton of value on it. It's got Reach, it's got Vigilance, it's got Trample, so it's getting through, it's staying up as a blocker, and it's got a whole bunch of extra text on it. You could get more bodies, you could get a little bit of life back, or, as always, you can draw a card. Defiler of Vigor is going to make your whole board strong. You're going to have the big boys out there with Defiler of Vigor. We love that also, and it's got a little bit of that cost reduction. And of course, my favorite, Averbrook Caretaker, has hexproof, gives your creatures a little bigger, and God forbid it flips over. Hollowhenge Huntmaster is a monster. 6-6 six, six hexproof, other permanents you control have hexproof. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put two 1-1 one, one counters on each creature you control, including itself. So, of course, it's Nightbound, Daybound, so in order for this thing to flip over... Uh, a player has to cast no spells during that turn. It's going to work really well with your deafening silence. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to get this to flip over. And if people remember that it's there, they will play one spell. They'll force themselves to play a spell just to stop that thing from flipping over. Now, this next card was given to me as a recommendation by River May Cry of all people. He took a look at my list and said, are you running Sarah's Emissary? And this card is a game closer. Flying as it enters the as as it enters the battlefield, choose a card type. You and creatures you control have protection from the chosen card type. So against a Winota deck, you name creatures. If it's a deck where you're worried you're gonna get like Kark Sakashima, where you're worried you're gonna get grape shotted or something like that, you could name instance, and it's gonna really lock your board into place as well. And it's a 7-7 flyer, which is massive. So you're going to close a game quick with this thing out there. We've got 
a four mana crater hoof in here, a chroma's will is going to close games as well. Choose one. If you control a commander, you may choose both. Creatures you control gain flying, vigilance, double strike until end of turn. So that's one mode. And the other mode says creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible, and pro all colors until end of turn. Best case scenario, this is closing out a game for you. Worst case scenario, it's either protecting your creatures for a turn like a heroic intervention would do, or it's drawing you six cards instead of three on the attack because it gives them double strike. So if you go for flying vigilance double strike and you just swing in and you get your three punches in with no flyers, you're going to draw a ton of cards, which six cards for four mana, there's worse deals, right? And our big, big closers are going to be, of course, Big Mom. We got Elshnorn. Wow, we got to get the Elshnorn Big Mom altar out there, right? We've got Kamal, Heart of Crozia, and of course... Crater Hoof Behemoth. And these are going to absolutely just lock up games once you, they hit the field, as long as they don't get took from you, right? We've got a little bit of utility lands. Viseju, Iganjo. Iganjo usually just hits the field. It's very, very seldom that this is going to be like, I blow up your creature. It's pretty good, though. Of course, we've got a Cradle. Urza's Saga brings out some cool stuff. Emergent Zone. I flashed in a Crater Hoof with Emergent Zone the other day. People were displeased. Homeward Path in case of those stupid Gilded Drakes, and of course a Yavimaya Hollow as a little bit of protection as well. You could regenerate some creatures just in case. And then we've just got a nice easy mana base. Couple of basics, not a lot, and that's going to be Dalsum. So your game plan is you want to mull to getting a Dalsum out, so you want to see like two to three lands and a piece of ramp, and maybe a creature, an evasive creature to get out there as well. So you play early evasive creature or a mana dork, Get Dalsum out there, and by turn two to three, you're swinging and drawing cards. You want to hoard interaction, play permanence, and discard stuff that you don't think is really going to work. Play your stacks pieces smart. I know that's easier said than done. Stacks pieces can end up screwing you over as much as it screws over somebody else. So you want to be really careful about where you play them. And that's the easy game plan. If you want to see a really in-depth look at how this, game, this deck can perform at its peak efficiency, please go check out... Ken Bauman's list and his primer. And thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe out there. If you made it this far, I want to say thank you for watching. The best way to support us is through Patreon. Go to our Patreon, give us a sub. It's going to help us do absolutely amazing things. And the next time you need some incredible gaming accessories, go over to Quiver Time, use the code BIGDRAWS to get a, a huge, awesome discount on your purchase. And it helps the channel as well. Thank you guys again so much. Don't forget to hit all the buttons. Just absolutely fucking elbow drop those buttons. All the likes and subscribes get us there. We're, we're pushing that 5K mark. Help us get there.